Hey everyone, my name is David Rao, and I'm the music teacher who blogs at makemomentsmatter.org. You can also find my ideas on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter, on Pinterest, and a variety of other places when you search for my name, David Rao, or Make Moments Matter. Um, I'm excited to be sharing this week all about kindergarten. I'm gonna be sharing um, several different classes of lessons, like three classes in a row, of like what I do and the sequence and the, the resources I'm using, and talk a little bit about what's being successful and um, what's not been successful, not just in this lesson, but sort of throughout the year. Um, so as we're going, if you have thoughts, questions, ideas about kindergarten lessons, about, um, hey, what's, you know, how did that work or how did this thing happen, please throw those in the comments. Um, because kindergarten is one of those classes that especially this year I think is really interesting <laughs> because uh, it well you get a lot of interesting um, problems or quirks or issues that come up um, that don't happen as much into the grades just because kindergarten is so new um, usually to uh, the building in the process so I'm excited to talk a little bit about that. Um, before I get there, so um, if you hear uh, any cool resources or books or puppets or things that you're like, ooh, that's awesome, I wanna learn more about that, um, I have a whole page on my blog dedicated to the, the resources I talk about this in video. Um, if you wanna get there, there's a link probably at the bottom of wherever you're listening to or watching this video. Um, you can click that and go directly there, or you can go to my blog, makemomentsmatter.org, and click on the video tab, and you should be able to find Musical Monday's recap for the current school year. Uh, and one more thing, if you are interested, there is a Facebook group, um, Every Moment Matters, a music education community. It's just a place to ask questions, to uh, chat with other people, um, make connections, and hopefully learn together. So come join us, we'd love to have you um, as we sort of work and become better music teachers together. Okay, so as I was saying a second ago, I think kindergarten is a really interesting um, grade level because, um, you know, problems and issues and things crop up because a number of reasons one of them being that they're so new to the school and they're still figuring out like how to stand in line how to sit crisscross applesauce how to listen um how to actively listen um how to i mean there's there are all of these things that they are still learning and so um i think kindergarten in august and september is just a hot mess just a hot just a whole mess of, of issues. And I think that the way that, that many of us make it through the fall um, with kindergarten sort of changes, our pedagogy sort of changes when we get to the spring because it can sort of morph more into the, the, um, the sort of steadier pace and steadier um, lesson structure that maybe you use with other grades. Because kindergarten in the fall is like, I feel like it's a lot of like smoke and mirrors to like try and like, because you're teaching them like procedures, you're teaching them classroom um, expectations, you're teaching them how to use their voice, how to identify sounds, how to move safely with one. I mean, there are all these things that like you have to do before you can really get into like content. And so I feel like when you hit spring semester when you come back after winter break and, and especially a couple weeks in it's so like now i mean the school year i'm in the last quarter the school year's almost over but i feel like we're finally getting to a place where we can finally do something um and so that's i think one of the interesting things about kindergarten um and if you are a new word teacher and you're like kindergarten is a mess still that's fine it is for many of us who have been teaching a while too. So that's good. <laughs> I think every, and it's it's funny, every homeroom is different. Every uh, year is different. And this year especially is tricky because these kids, the world they've been in the last couple of years has been so, you know, thrown into chaos and, and routines have been unsettled and things are weird. And so um, kindergartners are really adjusting. And what they got last year, maybe at home or in preschool or daycare or wherever they were, um, is very different from the norm that we've had for the last many years. So that creates some interesting issues and problems. But I, th I think this is, I think any veteran teacher who you would talk to um, would say this is an interesting cohort of kindergartners <laughs> no matter what school you're at. So um, let's talk about kindergarten. So um, the lessons that we're getting to, we're getting to a lot more content. I'm getting to a place where I can sing longer songs. You know, in the beginning of kindergarten, they can only handle so much. 
Um, and I try to have lots and lots of little songs, um, lots of very short things you can build a story around, you can build um, lessons around, you can build a little bit of content around, maybe some instruments, maybe some other things. But at the beginning of the year, I feel like there's a lot of like shorter pieces. And now I'm getting to the point where they have the self-control, they have the self-awareness, they have the stamina that we can do longer songs, maybe with verses, maybe with improvisation, maybe with new things. And so that's sort of what we're getting into. So one of the songs that I, um, I've been doing the last couple weeks as a way to start is Luby Lou. So um, let me just grab my probably out of tune ukulele. Oh, that's not too bad. So um, when the kids come in, you know, we make our circle, we do all that. And then a song that I love to do with them is, is Luby Lou, which if you're not familiar, goes, here we go, Luby Lou, here we go, Luby Light, here we go, Luby Lou, all on a Saturday night. The first time I teach it, I tell them like, you know, this is a song my grandma taught me when I was so little, when I was your age or younger, probably. Um, and it's one, I just love it because my grandma taught it to me. But just listen and see if you can hear. Um, there are a couple things in there that I want you to listen for, like what day is it and, and maybe some other details. Here we go, Luby Lou. Here we go, Luby Light. Here we go, Luby Lou. All on a Saturday night. So that's a sort of a fun, I mean, lots of people have different versions of that. Luby Lou, Loop Diddy Lou. There are lots of different things you can do in there. But I always have them figure out it's Saturday night. And we do some just silly little actions where we just lean one way. Here we go, Luby Lou. Lean the other way. Here we go, Luby Light. Lean back the first way. Here we go, Luby Lou. And then all on a Saturday night, we sort of do a, like a sunburst, I say, where your hands go up and over your head and then down around. All on a Saturday night. And those are the actions that I just, that I do with kiddos for the maybe the first time we go through it. And then I just say, you put your hand in. I know that's right hand, left hand, but we're still figuring that out. So you put your hand, you put your hand in, you take your hand out, you give your hand a shake, 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 and turn yourself about. And that's the verse, right? So we do that, and we sing, then we go back to sing the Luby Lou. I just, the first time, I'm just expecting them to do actions, maybe not. Um, sing as long just do the actions for that you put your hand in and we're in a big circle so you can put your hand in a circle you take your hand out you give your hand a shake 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 and turn yourself about and i make a big deal the first time about i don't say turn yourself around it's an old 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 song and a long time ago instead of saying turn yourself around they would say turn yourself about it's sort of silly but it means turn around so then we go back and sing here we go looby loo here we go looby light here we go, Luby Lou, all on a Saturday night. And then I say, you put your other hand, whichever hand you did before, put your other one in. You put your other hand in, you take your other hand out. You give your hand a shake, 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 and turn yourself around. Oh, wait, did I sing around? What was my, what was the word again? Turn yourself up. About, right, and they always, they can, they correct me. You told us it was about, oh yeah, it's about, sorry. And turn yourself about, oh, here we go, Lou. And then we do that. And then maybe put, put a foot in, your other foot. The first day, I don't make a big deal about right and left. I just do foot, other foot. And then, um, you know, I, I mix up other things along the way just to sort of catch them up. I, I do things on purpose, incorrect, and kids know that, like, I'm being silly and they're supposed to, ca to catch me. So, like, um, here we go, Loopy Lou. Here we go, Loopy Light. Here we go, Loopy Lou. All on a Monday night. And they're like, no, Saturday. I'm like, no, today is Monday. It's Monday today. All on a Monday night. Because so that's why you say Monday, because it's, it's Monday today. Like, no, no, the words are Saturday. And I always, I, I, I force them to like get out or to, to figure out how to say like, it is Monday. The song says sat. the song we learned, the version says Saturday. You're supposed to say Saturday. Oh, 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 right, right, right. Okay. So, but I, I, I do things like that just to see if they catch it, to see if they're listening, to see how well they're listening, and then to see if they will correct me. Sometimes they won't. Sometimes they they don't think about it or they don't remember what the actual word is. And that either means I need to reteach it or um, they just haven't heard the, the me singing it incorrectly. So that, that we do is a warm-up one day and then we go into a new lesson. Well, 
that we've done for a couple weeks. So the first, that's how I introduce it. As we go on, well then the second time we sing it, I do make a big deal out right hand, left hand. You put your right hand in, which hand is your right? And we we talk about the strategies of how to figure out right and left. I have signs in my room. There's above the big alphabet in my room. There's an R far on the right and an L far on the left. And um, we talk about how you have to face the thing. And you know, so um, we talk about how to do right and left. You face the alphabet, you hold up your hands, whichever hand matches the R, you know, that's when you bring it. And some kids are like, no, Mr. Rao, it's easy. You just do the L, right? And then they hold up their right hand and they hold it backwards and they make an L. I'm like, okay, that, that doesn't work. So anyway, we, we talk about in my room, what's the way to do that? And I do have the posters up there. So we do right hand, we do left hand, we do right foot, we do left foot. Um, usually the first couple times I just do different body parts. You put your head in, you put your shoulders in, your knees in. That's a really fun one. Um, you maybe you put your tummy in. And then about the third time, that's when I start asking for student um, so like the third time, I mean like the third time they come to my class and we use this as like our first opening song, I'll ask for like, I'll do one, I'll do a second one, and then I'll ask them, what do they want? So um, what's a body part that we could put in the circle? Um, and so I'm ready for all sorts of things, right? Because I know that like probably their go-to are going to be like head. There's always the kid who's like, this is the hokey pokey, let's do whole body. I'm like, ooh, whole body, let's save that for the last time. Let's save it. I'm going to come back to you. I'm saving it. We're saving that for last. Because there's always going to be the kid who's going to ask for whole body. Okay. So, but but I'm I'm fine with that. I just am like, let's delay that. Okay. Then there's the, you know, it's usually like, you know, if kids who like raise their hand don't have an answer, I'm like, do you want some options? And I think that's a great answer for kids. Like if they're, if they raise their hand, they want to have an answer, but they can't figure one out or they they're like they raise their hand too quick and didn't have an answer in their head um, or especially for English language learners if you give them options to choose from um, it's great to give them those options so that they know some things that they could put in the circle so like uh, it, do you want some options okay well we haven't done shoulders or knees or um, elbows or chin we haven't done you know and I liked it especially after we've done several times because sometimes they do have lots of vocabulary about different body parts but they just don't remember what we've already done okay well we've done hand right right hand left hand right foot left foot we've done hips and we've done ears but we haven't done anything else what else would you like you know so giving them options as we go through is great there's always gonna be the kid who says like put your booty in Okay, you can either decide to do that or not. That's that's like a personal teacher choice. Do I want to do we want to do booty? I don't know. I mean, it, with kindergarten, I don't feel like it's gonna, you know, do anything crazy. But you can decide whether you want to do that or not. Up to you. Um, and then you know, there, so like booty is always one that kids will say. Sometimes they'll um, sometimes they'll say like hips or something, and they think that's hilarious. Um, when you give it a shake, shake, shake. So like, just be prepared for what they're gonna say, but also be prepared for those kids who maybe raise their hand but don't have. The option, but I this at this point in in um in my teaching cycle, I'm I'm letting them give me some some options, especially for something like this. It's really easy because I've given them the framework of the song, and all I'm asking for is a different body part or something, which that gives them just like a tiny little bit of choice, but lets them feel like that they're they're moving the song along and they're making the choices here. And so maybe for two classes or so in a row, we'll do that where we start. I do one action, I do another action, or maybe we start with right hand and then left hand because that's always a great way to start. And then I start letting other kids choose things. And they might choose those predictable things like foot, right foot, left foot, or head or something because that's usually the progression I would teach it in is hand, hand, foot, foot, head, or whatever. And so sometimes they'll choose those things I would expect, cool. And sometimes they choose things I wouldn't expect. So it's always interesting to see. So after, let's say, you know, first day of lesson, we do Luby Lou. I let kids make some choices. That takes about eh, 10 minutes. It depends on how, if they're late or not, if they come in, how that all works. But eventually they get into the class. Um, we get into our circle and then we'll go to our like dot spots, which is like our seating chart spots. So maybe 10 minutes into a 30 minute lesson, maybe. Um, it depends on how many verses we do, how into it we are, if I need to reteach anything. So it's, it's always interesting when people are like 10 minutes in or 20 minutes in or whatever. I'm like, eh, it sort of varies per class. I always try and keep an eye on the clock because I don't want that opening activity to take too long, but I think it is important. Um, it just depends. You got to just, you know, if you're a newer teacher, you have to think about, um, you know, like how much you want to pace that or how much you want that to be because you don't want the, you don't want your important stuff later to slip away because you've taken too long on something in the beginning. 
And I say, like, if you're a new teacher or if you're a, a teacher who's been around a while and your schedule has changed, you've always done 45 minutes and now you're on 30 minutes. you got to really keep track of that. Um, or maybe you're just a teacher and it's, <laughs> you're tired. It's after lunch. Got to keep track of that. Anyway, so my kiddos sit down and um, we talk about um, – we talk about, uh, I say, I have a friend who is going to visit today, which is so great because I know you know nothing about chickens. And so I'm really excited for you to learn a little bit something about chickens for my friend the hen. And this is hilarious because kids are like, no, 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 Mr. Rowe. No, we know about chickens. In fact, actually, right now we have eggs in our room and the eggs are going to hatch. And it has timed perfectly that they are they are in their their unit where like all kindergarten classes have eggs in their room and so um i say like you have eggs in your room why why do you have eggs in your room and they're like well if you keep the eggs warm um if for 21 days they will hatch and then we will have chicks and i'm like ooh exciting and they're like and in six days my teacher's gonna get out the special flashlight and she's gonna do the thing where if she sees a red dot that means that we have a chicken eye like they're candling the eggs or whatever anyway hilarious so but i i know this is happening in their room so i say i know you know nothing about chickens and so i bring that up and they say like oh well if you keep the, the eggs warm and i was like oh oh is that why um julianne is missing this today because is she in the back in the room sitting on the egg and they're like, no, she's sick today. Or <laughs> she had a doctor's appointment. Oh, oh, is that where Mrs. Hoover is? She's sitting on the egg. She didn't come, bring your class down because she's sitting on the No, Mr. Raza. And then it's like, it's in an incubator. Oh, okay, okay. So wait, if I keep an egg warm for 21 days, it will hatch. And they're like, yes. So I pull out an egg shaker. I'm like, so if I just keep this warm, if I just sit on it for 21 days, it will hatch. What will it turn into? And so the, it's just, this is my way to mess with them. I just take a minute or two. But it, it makes a connection to what they're doing in their classroom. And um, it's funny. It's fun for them. And so to like, I just love the look on their faces when they realize that I'm suggesting I sit on an egg shaker for 21 days <laughs> to make it hatch. And anyway, it's a hilarious moment. So then we do talk about um, my friend the hen comes out and says, well, the hen um, is, you know, here to tell you all about chicks. I'm very excited because she had an egg and the egg hatched. And in that egg was a little chick. Oh, and I don't know if you can see this chick. It's so cute. This little chick puppet and this little chicken puppet. I, I, just before the video today, I checked to see. You can find the chick online. Um, the chicken, I can't find it on Amazon. That doesn't mean you can't find it, but I just can't find it there. Um, it might be other places. I, it's worth checking. Um, so what I'll say is that sometimes um, these puppets which is this folk manis brand that's my favorite brand of puppet if you can't find them on amazon or like a thing a place you would look normally or maybe on a website or their website or a toy website check out like bookstores because a lot of times like barnes and noble or local bookstores will have folk manis puppets and if they like um have retired the puppet like say folk manis has retired it a lot of independent bookstores or local bookstores or even barnes and noble or whatever will still have them they just may not be on amazon or whatever so if you, I, I can't find the hen currently there is another hen online um, on Amazon but it, you might be able to find this one at like Barnes & Noble or another online bookseller or retailer it's worth looking or find a different hen doesn't matter this is just this one is called the funky chicken and I really like it anyway so the chicken comes out and she says um I'm going to tell you about when I have my chicks and it's very exciting. Anyway, so and then like the, she talks about the she talks about the chick and how, you know, I say like, you know, chicks and and hens, they they talk to each other a lot and the chicks always know their mama's voice. But really when when hens speak, they go bark 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 and chicks go peep peep peep, right? Bark 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 bark. Peep 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 peep. Um, and so when they're talking back and forth that you can't really understand what they're saying, but I actually do understand what they're saying. Um, and I actually listened to their conversation the other day and um, the hen said, um, good morning, little chicks. And the chick said, good morning, mama. And she said, we're going to go out to play. Yay, yay, love to play. Um, but when I call you, must come home. I will do that. Okay, so they go outside and uh, the mama says, okay, you get to go play. But when I say, come back home, my little chicks, you must come, will do. Bye bye. And the chick goes out and plays. And then the mama chick, like, mm, I don't know, she hangs out. She has a little snack. And she, like, maybe reads a book. Mm, mm, oh. 
No, David. Okay, I don't know. And she, and then um, she, like, maybe she doesn't exercise. Waits. Okay, so anyway, <laughs> and eventually it's time to go in. She goes, come back home, my little chicks. And they go, here we come, here we come. And then they go off home, right? And then the next day they come back out and Mama says, oh, my little chicks, you may play, but... When I say, come back home, my little chicks, you must come. We will come. Okay, great. So then she says, okay, go and play. And they go off and play. And then Mama, like, has a snack. And then she, like, um, watches TV. Mm -hmm. Oh, got to catch up on Netflix. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, or I don't know, maybe she then, like, um, she, I don't know, um, does some backflips. Woo! Okay, so anyway. Um, but eventually she goes, come back home, my little chicks. And the chicks go, here we come, here we come. And I set up this like back and forth where like the chicks always come home, right? Because it, there's the song is, the first verse of the song is we won't come. But like if you don't set up that expectation, like they come home, it's not a big deal if they don't come. So I always set up that expectation like they come home. Okay, so the uh, sidebar moment. So the, the chicken hand puppet is just a chicken hand puppet. And my fingers go in her arms. And then my another finger goes in her beak her beak does not open the chick is just a finger puppet but my little trick that i learned a couple years ago is um if you have a chick like a finger puppet where like your finger has to you know they they fall off really easily and that just like slows down your lesson um so or especially if you're handing it from kid to kid oh it takes forever for them to hand off the puppet to another kid forever so what i do is i just take a, a random wooden mallet um and i put that uh, the finger puppet on the wooden mallet and then the cool thing is that it stays on pretty well and um especially if it's like a if it's a wooden mallet it's pretty good if it's like rubber or something with a little texture that keeps the the finger puppet in place you're golden but um what i've learned is then if you have to pass the the, the puppet on from one kid to the next um it's really easy because it doesn't mean that you know one kid like taking it off and handing it off they're just handing the stick from one kid to the next and if you need to like lysol sanitize the stick it's really easy to do that but like spraying lysol on your puppets don't love that so anyway um putting it on the little mallet stick is very very helpful okay so eventually they come out one day and mama goes you may go and play but when i come you must come home Okay. Okay, bye, chick. Okay, bye, mama. And then mama has like a snack. Okay, and then she has some water. And then she has, um, she talks to her friend. I don't know. And then she, I don't know, reads some more book of her book. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't let the pigeon drive the bus. Exactly. And then eventually she goes, come back home, my little chicks. I don't know where they went. Did you see them? I did not see them. I'll try again. Come back home, my little chicks. Don't see them. Maybe they didn't hear me. Come back home, my little chicks. We won't come. What? Did they say they won't come? They said they won't come. What? Come back home, my little chicks. We won't come. Why not? We're afraid. They're afraid. Hmm. Wonder why that is. Of what? Of the wolf. Oh, a wolf. They must have seen him. I didn't see any wolf, but I'm busy reading and eating and things. So I wasn't really looking. I don't see any. Do you see one over there? Don't see one over there. Hmm. Do you see one over there? No. Do you see one over here? No wolf. Hmm. Where's he hiding? Maybe they saw him. Where's he hiding? In the woods. Oh, okay. So he's in the woods. Hmm. What's he doing? Washing. Washing? Washing? Why is that scary? I thought it was, he was like trying to like, 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 like grocery shopping. Then you know he's hungry or something. But washing, that's not a scary thing. Why is he scared of Hmm. Wait, so he, what's he doing? I must have heard them wrong. Washing. Wait, but why are you scared of washing? What if he's washing his hands so he can eat his lunch? A jet. I don't know. So anyway, the kids think that that's funny. The thing is funny. That, and I'm always like, washing? Why are you scared of washing? And I was like, scared of washing his hands? I don't get it. 
oh, maybe he's washing his face. Who knows? But maybe you're washing his whole body. And then we talk about, like, if you get out of the shower and you can't find a towel or you don't have a – or not get out of the shower, get out of the bath or whatever, and there's no towel around, what do you do? You're all sopping wet. And so um, that's why the mama chick asks, what's he wipe or what's he drying his face on? Because if he doesn't have a towel around, he's going to have a wet face. It's be crazy. And wolf, he's all furry, so he wouldn't be able to see, so the chicks would be safe. So what's he drying his face on? Because he doesn't have a towel, I bet. And the chicks go, it's silly, I shouldn't say. No, you should say, oh, I asked, what's he drying his face on? But it's silly, I don't know if she said, I don't know if she said. Come on, what's he drying his face on? On the kitty cat's tail. <laughs> and then they run off. So, and then I, I actually have, of course, a kitty cat puppet right and so <laughs> i say it's like if you've been washing your face and your face is all wet and you can't find anything you just reach around and all you can find is the cat and you you know wipe off your face with that and then, so that's pretty silly on wiping it on a kitty cat's tail it'd be hilarious so anyway that's the whole song and they go back and forth and i say oh listen to that again listen to their their little interaction again the first time i play it out as a long story and then the second time we just run through it so here's the song without the the commentary in between come back home my little chicks we won't come. Why not? We're afraid. Of what? Of the wolf. What's he doing? Washing. What's he drying? Oh, sorry, I missed one. Of course, while I'm trying to demo it, I missed one. Come on, my little chicks. No, why not? We won't come. Why not? We're afraid. Of what? Of the wolf. Where's he hiding? Because I always forget about it. In the woods. What's he doing? washing what's he drawing his face on on the kitty cat's tail and then maybe the next time i'll say like can you do the part that goes on the kitty cat's tail and but you have to do it in a whisper because it's like silly because you don't have to be like oh i can't believe i'm saying this on the kitty cat's tail and you gotta whisper that part okay great so we drag in and eventually i do it i usually do about three times and then i'll say i wonder can you do the chicks part yeah do the chicks part i'll do it with you and you say it with me and we'll do the chicks part are you ready let's try it okay so the i'll do the chick i'll do the hen part and you all get to do the chick part so come back home my little chicks we won't come and i'll hold out the little in, to the kids so they know it's like it's their turn and of course i have a mask on so i'm singing along they don't really know but anyway anyway so come back home my little chicks we won't come. Why not? We're afraid of what? Of the wolf. And so we go through the whole process and then we do it again and they get to do the hens part. The kids for the most part can remember, the first time through they can remember most of the things. The thing that they do forget is what I forgot when I tried to demo it a minute ago is uh, where's he hiding? Or they'll either mix up the order of where's he hiding or um, what's he doing? And so after what's he doing, then they're pretty good about remembering what's he drying his face on and on the kitty cat's tail. So, but but sometimes I'll mess up the first couple times, no big deal. Okay, also I love, it's hilarious to me when I'm like gesturing or pointing to something and there's just this chicken butt in the air. Anyway, okay, so, um, so then we, we switch and then the kids do the, the mama hen part. And say, so, do you remember how to start it? It goes, come back home. And they're, yep, then they're running. So they go, come back home, my little chicks. We won't come. Why not? We're afraid of what? I actually find that the mama, once you got mama going, um, that, that's actually, I feel like, an easier part because she just responds to the chick. Uh, why not? Why won't you come back? We're afraid of what? Of the wolf. Where is he hiding in the woods? What's he doing? Washing. What's he drawing his face on? They can remember that actually pretty well. So we do that four or five times. And then um, once I feel like they've really got it down, I say, oh, you know what? There's actually a game that goes with this. I, I really want to teach you the game to this, but we, we can't stay in our scattered formation. We have to make a big circle. So come on, let's make a nice big circle. So when we first enter this game, I put the puppets down. We make a big circle. All kids are holding hands. They're standing up holding hands. And then I say, I need someone um, to be my helper. And I, you know, I choose a kid who I feel like is most of the time been paying attention. And I say, you could be the wolf. Um, and so just stand outside the trees and hide behind one of the trees. So I stand in the middle. I'm the hen the first time. And the, the, uh, the other kid who's been chosen is outside the circle. And I say, okay, if you're holding hands, um, you are the chicks hiding in the forest. You're hiding in the tree. And so your hands are part of the tree and your head is the chick and whatever. Anyway, so you're, you're the chick and you got to sing back to me. 
So I'll sing my first part. Come back home, my little chicks. And all the other kids go, we won't come. And it goes through that process. And on the word, on the kitty cat's tail at the end of the song, um, then all their hands come down and the wolf chases me. And he has to try and get me. Um, I'm in the middle of the circle. I can go out of the circle. I can go through the circle. He can go through the circle. He can go around the circle. It doesn't matter. Um, but whoever is chasing me, it just event. <laughs> the crazy thing about this thing is he chases until he gets me. It's not like I got to make it around and get back to my spot. It's like he chases until he gets me. And so that's always hilarious. If there's, if there's ever a pair of kids who just keep going and going and going and going, I usually like I mean, the first time I let myself get caught, but if, if I'm like the teacher on the outside and they're just zooming around forever, um, then I become like a bush that just pops up out of nowhere and I stop the hen so that the wolf can catch the hen. Anyway, so, or the original version I think is um, that the, the wolf can like draft a person to help him. Like he can, st if it's going for a while, the wolf can like stop and get help. Um, but anyway, I just, I sort of, break in and I'm just like, oh no, there's a bush, there's a bush that's stopping the hen or whatever. And then the wolf catches. Anyway, so that's sort of how the process works. There's a circle of kids. Um, one kid is the wolf, one kid is the hen. Um, the best part about this that I love is that the hen, with all of my kindergarten classes, the hen, I go, oh great, you get to sing the hen part. Do you want me to help get started? And then I stand out here with my ukulele and they get started, come, come back home, my little chicks. We won't come. Why not? We're afraid of what? Of the wolf. And I play just a C chord on the, the chick part. So like the, the group part. And it's a, you know, a, um, it's a question and answer back and forth between the hen and the kids. And I have maybe had a couple kids who are like, I don't want to sing the hen part. And then I say, I'll sing it with you. Uh, and so we sing the hen part together. If there's a kid who's like, mm, I'm not. I'm I'm ner I don't remember or whatever. I I do sometimes when kids blank on what comes next. Come back home, my little chicks. They can usually do that. We won't come. Why not? We're afraid of what? Of the wolf. I mean, where is he hiding? Where is he hiding? You know. So like, but but what I love about this is if you do it enough times, uh, like as a demo or as a, like teaching the class, teaching the story. Um, kids have it memorized. It's pretty easy. So what they'll do is like, I haven't had very many kids who are like, I don't want to do it. I don't want to sing. You know, quite a few will. And then they get a solo moment and the rest of the class gets to answer back. And it's, it's just magical. You can see who's matching pitch. You can see who understands the interval. You can see if they're using their singing voice. It's like all these great assessment things. You can walk around as a teacher and listen to individual kids and, you know, on, as part of the circle if you want. Um, but they think it's just so much fun and funny. The whole idea is funny for them. And so they really like it. And it just happened to work out that is during their like egg chick unit in their classroom. So like, haha, -ha, integration. Um, but also they just, it's just a super fun song and they have lots of fun with it. And it's great because then in my curriculum, what I'm supposed to do, and this happens in the next lesson, is we're supposed to talk about so me, and we're supposed to like identify that. And so in the next lesson, because that basically, you know, looby loo, and then tell the story and then play the game, that takes the whole time. So in the next lesson, we start with, um, well, actually, I, I do a different song to start out the lesson because we're going to come back to the little chicks. So to start out the next lesson, I bring in a different barnyard animal. I bring in a duck. Um, and of course I have a duck puppet. I might actually have a couple, but anyway, this is the duck that I have. Um, can you wave? There you go. And so, um, this duck, you know, ducks can also talk to their, um, ducklings. They don't call them chicks. You could call them chicks, I guess, but a baby duck is called a duckling. Yeah. And, um, what do you say to your duckling? Quack, 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 quack. Yeah, you quack. Right. And, um, so anyway, so you quack to your duckling. Quack, 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 quack. Yeah. And what does that mean? Come back when I call you. Yes, exactly. So it's sort of like the mama hen, right? Like the one we learned about last time. Anyway, um, she sings quack, 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 quack. And then all the ducks know that they need to come back, right? I need a duckling finger puppet. Don't have one yet, but I found one on Amazon. So like I should probably get it. Anyway, um, so to complete the set, because I have a hen and a chick, so I should probably have a duckling for a duck. Anyway, so this is how I sort of intro, you know, like it, it's the same sort of premise as the, the hen with the chicks is like, when she quacks, the ducks know they need to come back. The ducklings know they need to come back. So um, how does it sound again when you quack? Quack, 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 quack. Yeah. Quack, 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 quack. Yeah, and by just by that, some of the kids are like, I think I know this one. 
Anyway, so I say, well, so one day there were the ducklings. There are actually five of them. And they went out to play. And Mama said, when I go quack, 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 you got to come back. Okay. And then they all went out. And they went, they didn't stay close. These ducklings, they, they have good hearing. So they went over the hills. They went far away. But eventually when Mama Duck was ready for them, because I don't know, she like had a snack and watched TV and read a book and whatever she else she did. She went quack, 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 quack. All of the little ducks came back. They just came right back when they were supposed to come. And then they went home and, and had a snack or a go-gurt. I don't know what they did. But they came back the next day and Mama said, when I call, you must come back. So the five little ducks, they went over the hills and far away. Um, and they went out to play. And so anyway, Mama Duck was chilling with maybe her friend the hen. And I don't know. They watched Maury. I don't know what they did. They had a great time. Eventually she goes, quack, 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 quack. And all of the little ducks came back. And then one day. This is what happened. Five little ducks went out one day over the hills and far away. Mama duck said quack, 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 quack. But only four little ducks came back. Quack, 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 Oh, no, sorry. You're trying to pull my thumb back out, but but actually there are only four little ducks that came back. Quack, 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 quack. Quack, 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 quack. And the duck is like pretending like, you know, like must be five, right? Like trying to, and, but only four came back. Quack, 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 quack. The duck wants us to stop and look for the other little duckling that's missing, but we got to go on. Because the next day goes, four little ducks went out to play over the hills and far away. Mama duck said quack, 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 but only three little ducks came back. Quack, quack. And the, the duck puppet is in distress because ducks keep disappearing. Quack, 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 quack. Like, where are the other two? I don't know. They're, they're not around. But you know what? We'll look for them tomorrow when we go out to play. They go out. They come back. Three little ducks went out one day over the hills and far away. Mama duck said quack, 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 quack. But only two little ducks came back. Quack, 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 quack. She said, I started with five and are lonely two. That's no good. And so anyway, let's do two. Two little ducks. And so we go through. And when we get down to one little duck, uh, Mama Duck said, one little duck went. And Mama Duck grabs my finger and is like, you can't like, you can't go out and play. Because I only have one left. I pull my finger back. No, let's try. One little duck. Like you can't have that. You can't have the last little duck. Anyway, so it's the one little duck goes out to play, and no little ducks came back. Quack, 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 <laughs> quack. And the, the mama duck is sad. And then we say, mama duck, let's sing the next part. Quack, 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 quack. But there are no ducks to come back, right? And it's very sad. And no little ducks went out one day over the hills and far away. Mama duck said, mama duck, you got to sing this part. Mama duck said. She's sad because her ducklings are missing. Mama Duck, you got to sing this part. Mama Duck said... Kids, can you sing it for her? She's just not feeling it today. Mama Duck said quack, 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 quack. And all of the little ducks came back. Now, I've done this version where... <laughs> I think when I first did this for did this song, I learned a version where like the ducks just leave and they don't come back. And I think there was like where I first learned it was like there's a lesson like, well, and ducks do. They leave their mamas eventually. And I was like, that is a sad way to end this song for kindergarten. We're not doing the life cycle here. We're not talking about ducks growing up and moving on. So like we're gonna bring them back. So we bring the ducks back um for the five little ducks, and then Mama Duck is super happy. Um anyway, so we we have a great time with that. Um and, and then we go back to, oh, do you remember the other, we learned about the hen and the chicks and how they like to, you know, sing back and forth and whatever. Uh, and so we, we remember the song, um, come back, come back. What was my key? I was like, come back home, my little chicks. We won't come. We sing through the song one time. And then we talk about, um, you know, I say, Kindergarten, I'm so excited that you're here today because I don't know if you noticed this, but on the board, all year long have been these things. And I, of course, they're actually magneted up to the board. I'm not just holding them up, fanning them out as I am for you tonight. But they're actually been bun up on the board and it's it's um solfege syllables with the little hand sign next to it. And um 
So I said, you know, these have been up there the whole time. We just really haven't really talked about them, but now it's time and I'm so excited. And actually these are sort of like a special musical language that we use sometimes when we wanna talk about music. And there are two of the, the words that I want you to learn today. Now, I know you're, you're learning so many words in your classroom, you're learning sight words, you're learning all these things, but, but these words are not really English, so they don't really work well for like sight words. But like this first one actually does look like one of your sight words. S-O is what? So, yeah, so. And so we talk about so, we talk about where it goes, what it looks like with your hand. I always say it looks like a wall sort of by your chin, almost like a mask, like where your mask would maybe go, almost like that. And we call it so, we talk about that. And then this one, when we talk about me, I say, you know, this one, if you're going to read it, like if you're going to use your reading skills and use your phonics, like what would it sound like? What would you probably say? And they'd say meh or my, because it looks like hi or meh, but probably meh. Um, but or my for like might or whatever. <clears throat> and I say, you know what? That's actually absolutely right. Um, but because the, this is not English, it's, it's a different language, sort of a musical special language. Um, we don't say meh and we don't say my. We actually say me. Isn't that silly? It's me. How do you spell me if you're like writing it for your teacher? M-E. Yeah, but you know what? In music, when you're saying me, like for, for the solvage, you get to say M-I. That's how you're going to spell it. Isn't that crazy? And they love that. Again, it's making a connection to what they're doing in their classroom and then showing the contrast, giving a little tiny bit of explanation. I'm not going to be like, let's talk about Guido. No, like I'm not going to do that. But we do like have like a moment where we like make the connection between sight words and we sort of talk about how the solfege are sort of like sight words for us and how we can use them to build songs. And then I just, I sing, I have them echo back just a little bit. Um, and then we jump in back into a game version of Come Back Home My Little Chicks. I don't even identify it in the song yet. Um, we will in the next lesson. We'll talk about, wait, hold on. I think I hear that so be interval or whatever. Um, and we can talk about other songs we don't. App, apple tree, apple tree, will your apple fall on me? We could talk about the Sobe there or any of the other songs we've learned throughout the year. But in this lesson, it's just like, here's sort of the idea. Here's the concept. And then, and then I let that ruminate. And as we sing, then, you know, like maybe kids will be like, hold on, I think I hear that. You know, but it's like something where it's like we talk about it and then we're going to identify it in a lot of different places in the next lesson. But I don't really spend a lot of time in this lesson talking about it. Now, in the next lesson, I'm not going to go through the whole thing. In the next lesson, we'll do maybe Five Little Ducks came, Went Out One Day. Um, we might do Steady Beat as we're doing it. Five Little Ducks Went Out One Day Over the Hills and Far Away. Instead of doing the actions, which we could, um, we might do Steady Beat instead. So then that's giving them a chance to do um, the, the rhythm, or sorry, the beat of the song. Um, while the rhythm of the music continues on top of it, which is a great skill to have and which is going to come back later. Um, but like having them pat the steady beat is a great thing that they can do while they're singing. So we maybe start out with that. Um, we do the so me and then I'm going to have them get out their little beat buddies, little beanie babies, which you can get these from anywhere. Don't buy them new. Find them online. Put out an ad on Facebook Marketplace asking for them for donations or whatever. There are a lot of parents out there or grandparents are like, oh, I got a room full of those. I don't need any more. These are actually, I got a bunch of like mini beanie babies. These were at one point like a McDonald's um, Happy Meal prize. And there was a lady in my old school district who's like, my kids used to collect all of them. We have a hundred. I want to get rid of them. Do you want them? I was like, yes. And she was a teacher and she gave them to me for free. Anyway, you can get donations of these. Don't go buy them. Anyway, so what we're going to do is we're going to sing to our beat buddies. We're going to keep steady beat. We might sing the song to them. We might sing So Me to them, but we're going to have them there. Or another great application is um, you can have your beat buddy talk to another person's beat buddy, but just like Mama Chick and, or sorry, Mama Hen and the baby chick, you got to sing like this. Hello, how are you? I am fine. That's so nice to hear about. And it's sort of that arioso sort of idea from the, the Fire Robin folks. Um, but it's it's specifically on So Me for this one uh, because it mimics what they did in the previous song. So if my kids aren't getting, I don't come and go like, actually you sing this interval. You know, like if they're doing something else, that's okay. But because we've, because I've like shown them so much of the So Me in the sing and they've seen it and they've heard it and they've watched that conversation happen between the puppets, they sort of naturally do that. And it's great to like give them that encouragement for this because we're trying to get them to focus on that so me interval. They do that with the beat buddies and we have fun and then we might play the game again if we have time or a different version of another game um, if we have time at the end. 
Okay, so that's a couple, that's like three lessons worth of kindergarten. And it's a lot of play. It's a lot of, it's more focused though, like I said at the beginning of the video, it's like sort of more focused than what we're doing in the fall because fall is so much classroom expectations and um, so much um, just teaching kids like who to be, how to be at school. And I don't think my kindergartners could handle a lesson as focused as these in the fall. And so it's exciting to sort of bring it back uh, come back home my little chicks is one I haven't done for years, but it's worked so well and it's so much fun We could eventually take it to uh, Maybe bring it back in first grade and then go to like xylophones and figure out the the different parts and Instead of singing back they could play back the part come back come back home my little chicks bum 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 Why not bum 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 they could uh, sing and play we're afraid bum 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 as they play So there are a lot of things you can do with the song. It's a great one I think I learned this song years ago from a workshop from Aileen Miracle, um, and I've seen it on a bunch of websites. The, the um, I think it's on the Kodai Holy Names University uh, song database, but I've seen it all over. It's a great song, um, super fun to use, and, and it's, like I said, surprisingly successful. Um, a couple other things that I would add in is like next steps or maybe the next couple lessons to build on this. If you want to keep going with that idea of like singing back and forth, um, there's this cute book, Peppy Sings a New Song. This is by Laura Lundqvist. And um, I have this linked in the links page. Um, I found a copy of this. It's on Amazon for $1.99. It's a used version, but go get it. It's great. Anyway, I linked that on the links page. The first page goes, Peppy the parrot lived with Peter. Peter loved space. Every night while Peter stargazed, Peppy sang him a special song. Twinkle, twinkle, little stars. Satellite, planet, galaxy, Mars. Comet, Venus, telescope. Jupiter, rocket, asterope. Saturn, Mercury, Milky Way. Neptune, orbit, moon, sun, ray. Or you could just sing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. It's fine. If you don't want to get into the fancy version, just sing the original. Peppy loved singing, but Peter seemed a little tired of his song. So Peppy decided to go find some new things to sing about. His first stop was Manuel's Bakery. Hello, Peppy, said Manuel. Or if you've been doing the hello back and forth on the Somi interval all year long, hello, students, hello, Mr. Rao, like we've been doing, you could do hello, Peppy said Manuel. Would you like to find all the tasty things in my bakery? Whoops, went too far. And so he did. Whisk, pastries, decorate, rolling pin, cupcakes, sprinkles, dough, icing, cookie cutter, messy. Soon Peppy had batches of tasty things to sing about. So his next stop was Clive's music studio. Hello, Peppy, said Clive. Would you like to find all the things or all the musical things in my studio? Saxophone, maracas, accordion, xylophone, bow, violin, trombone, electric bass, amplifier, flute, shh. And it goes through and he finds all these different things in different places. Let's see where he goes. Um, he goes to an art studio. He goes to a grocery store or market. He goes to a dog park, which is one of my favorites. Also, these are like the most beautiful illustrations. It's just super bright colors, fun line art. Um, and he finds all these dogs. Of course, no basset hound, sad. Edit, need a new edit of the book, need a basset hound edit. Anyway, so he comes back and he sings Peter a new song and the new song goes, Twinkle, twinkle, little flute, poodle, xylophone, cobalt, fruit, carrot, saxophone, icing, bow, violet, terrier, canvas, dough, pastries, whippet, sculpture, kale, bulldog, easel, trombone, scale. Peppy's song was a hit and Peter was inspired. So now every night, Peppy and Peter sing their special new song. Ooh. Together. And then it goes twinkle, twinkle, dot, 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 which means that you could then go and sing the um, original or the, the well-known version if you want. But this just like is 
like perfect for that of singing different things on the Sobe interval if you want to continue that on. Again, like at the beginning of the year, my kids are used to hearing, hello students, and they go back, hello Mr. Rao. And you know, as, as, an, as an introduction or as like a, an attendance thing, I'll be, uh, hello Julia, hello Mr. Rao, hello um, Juan, hello Mr. Rao, or whatever. And so it's sort of that fun back and forth. This is a book that, um, I have one more book. This is a book that I was gifted by a student after the book fair, um, and I didn't know why. Um, it was It's called Chicken Little and the Big Bad Wolf. And then I realized, oh, I just taught Peter and the Wolf. <laughs> so they they like this book. This is by Sam Wedelick, and I just got this from the Scholastic Book Fair. So it's fairly new. I know you could probably find it at your book fair. It's also not that expensive online. Um... Okay, so the book goes, I am not scared of any wolf, says the chicken. I don't care how big or bad he is. Besides, I've never even seen a wolf. It's just us chickens for miles and miles. Wham! Oh no, are you okay? Because ah! a wolf shows up. Was that a big dog? Too big, actually, and furry, and gray, and... Oh no, oh no, oh no. Chicken Little, what's wrong? I th th think I s saw a big b bad wolf. The big bad wolf? Right by your life! So they overreact. It's hilarious. Anyway, Chicken Little tries to catch up. Um, and then the, the, bar the hens in the barnyard are freaking out. Um, except they're not agreeing. Um, they decided to fly the coop because they're nervous about you know, is the bad, big bad wolf big or bad or is he not big or bad or whatever? Um, anyway, so Chicken Little catches up. She talks to them. Um, Chicken Little decides to investigate. And it says, sighted wolf. What is he reading anyway? Is he going to eat us all up? Super strong. Why is he always running? Oh, bother. There's only one way to be sure. Hey, wolf, are you bad? Me? I don't think so. I suppose we all have light and dark in us, but I try to make good choices, if that's what you mean. And I'm supposed to just trust you? You could have eaten me. But I didn't. Hmm, fair point. I didn't even eat meat, but everyone's still terrified of me anyway. And then, anyway, it's there's this cute little story where, like, the wolf doesn't eat meat, he's a vegetarian. Um, anyway, and they find out the wolf's not so bad. So this was hilarious after Peter the Wolf that I got this from a student. Because um, I joked in Peter and Wolf that the, the wolf in that story doesn't eat meat. He's probably fine. It's, you know, maybe maybe that wolf's not a big deal. Anyway, this is hilarious. They have salads together. They, they think it's super fun and funny. And they've become friends. But this is like the perfect, like if we just talked about, you know, the chickens being afraid of the wolf. Well, this is like a really fun story. Um, and you can absolutely then talk about like, you know, because Chicken Little goes to like try and research, is this wolf really bad or not? You know, like why are we villainizing this wolf? Anyway, it's hilarious. It's a super fun. Again, this might be a fun one. If you teach the song in kindergarten um, and then bring it back in first grade to do like a xylophone part or an extension or something else, this might be a fun one to then introduce in first grade where the kids have had a little bit more processing time or a year ahead as far as cognitive skills. And then you can talk to them about like, you know, is the wolf really bad or why do we know that or whatever. And so this would be great if you if you use that. Uh, maybe in a further year, but I, I might use it with my kindergarten. I might do where I do Peppy Sings a New Song for kindergarten, and then if I bring the song back and spiral it back in for other work, use Chicken Little in that following year. But, you know, whatever you want. They're both fun books. Um, and, of course, I'm going to advocate for the puppets because I think it just makes telling the story so much easier. If you don't have puppets and you really want to still do that where you, like, have an image that tells the story, I've also done the thing where you, like, print out clip art. You find clip art you like, print it out, and then you can hold it. And even if you, like, hold it and shake them at one another as if they're talking, kids will follow you and they'll be there for it. So um, if you don't have the puppets or you don't have, like, stuffed animals or something, um, you can do the same thing sort of with clip art. And kids, are, they get that it's just a story and you're telling different parts, but they're, they'll still be okay with it. Okay, that's a lot of kindergarten in one night, but I'm I, I'm enjoying talking about kindergarten. Um, I really do like kindergarten, even though it does present a lot of challenges. It's just so fun at the end of the year to see where kindergarten has come, like where, the, the long distance that they've traveled, both with behavior 
and singing skills and ability and just so much. Um, but it's about, I think it's about this time of year that they're at their best in some ways because, you know, once you hit May, all the kids like run a little bit off the rails. So like this is the time of year where I try and take a lot of videos. Like like when we're doing Come Back Home My Little Chicks and they're singing and they're singing with their head boys and they're using the Somi interval and they're singing solos. <sighs> you just gotta take videos of that and like package it up and save it for later because when you hit August and the new crop of kindergartners is just a hot mess, you need to remember that like it's gonna get better. They're gonna get, they're gonna be so successful. It's gonna be so much fun. So this is the time of year when we like we we have fun. We play fun songs, but we're learning a lot. And I try and just like memorize these moments, or just take videos because it's totally worth it. In fact, the other day, it was like the first day doing this, and I'm like, mm, I don't know how successful they're gonna be. And I remember like in the middle of one kid, I was like, Ooh, I really should have been videoing this because this is the kid that wouldn't sing for anything at the beginning of the year, and now they're singing and they're singing on pitch. So. Um, anyway, take videos now so you remember it later. Okay, if you are interested in anything that I talked about tonight, any of the puppets, the books, whatever, check out that links page. I know I have links to some of those things. Uh, again, if you go to, like, if you click through the links page and it goes to an Amazon listing, you don't have to buy it from Amazon. I, I like using Amazon like Pinterest, like it helps me find the stuff I want. And sometimes I'll go to Amazon, figure out who made the material or who the publisher of the book is, and then go find it elsewhere. So like for example, Peppy Sings a New Song, I don't know that it's in print and on Amazon currently, but you can take this in, the information from the Amazon listing, the ISBN and the publisher, and find it in a lot of other places. So if you, if you find something there you're really interested in, um, look around especially when it comes to the puppets because like I said if it's an older puppet sometimes you have to go to like a Barnes and Noble or a bookseller or something to try and find that puppet where it's for sale if, if it's out of stock um, and one of the big retailers sometimes it's in like bookstores and other places where you wouldn't necessarily expect to find puppets um, but if there's also something I talked about tonight that's not on the links page shoot me an email and I'll put it on there my email is makemomentsmatter at gmail.com Okay, everyone, I hope you have a great week, and I will see you next Monday for another Musical Mondays video. Thanks for joining me tonight, everyone. Bye-bye.